So uh, good morning, welcome. My name is Kevin Morrison, uh, and I'll be honest, this is my first virtual conference. Um, and so I apologize if I'm a little off kilter, but I'm used to talking, interacting with people, so not having the feedback is, is a challenge. But um, so really what I, I'm here to talk to you about is, uh, is really getting into moving out of the corporate industry and into the cannabis world. Uh, so a little background on me, um, I'm the current founder CEO of Nico Technologies, uh, which is, it's a software design company. We go out and we, we look at the software that's out there today. There was a lot of good discussions earlier this morning in the POS uh, discussion uh, in the weed track, weed tech track, uh, very good information uh, and very uh, educational. And uh, so that's where we kind of focus our uh, energies is understanding what the needs of cannabis are, not just today, but post legalization. Prior to uh, starting up Nico, I was uh, in the uh, corporate retail banking world for about 25, 30 years. Uh, mostly focused in payments, uh, digital payments, and, and the world as it has evolved over the last 30 years, really, in, in payments. But uh, I've been uh, very fortunate to work with some uh, great companies, some great institutions, great people. Uh, and it has been, uh, it, it has been, a, I've learned quite a bit in corporate America, but it has its drawbacks, as we all know, for those of us who've been there. But if you're thinking about getting into the cannabis industry, you really, so this is, uh, I, I give you some context. So I am, um, was born and raised in, in US, mid America, conservative, very conservative, uh, um, very, um, uh, you know, just set in their ways. And so when uh, I went to my mother, who uh, 85 uh, and a Catholic educator for 50 years before retiring, and so very conservative. And the first time I mentioned that I was going to get into cannabis, she she uh, she was not happy with me. She didn't talk to me for a little while, but uh, three weeks, I think maybe three weeks in, I, we went to a family event. And she pulled me off to the side and wanted to know what the minimum buy-in was to invest. So it's, it's, I, I think there's definitely some buys out there and, and um, people are that, I got that question, are you high constantly um, from everybody? Cause they just think it's just funny, but uh, and I'm sitting in a meeting with a couple of potential investors of my older daughter and, and the one guy who I've known from in, uh, commercial banking for quite some time asked me, he goes, are you high? And, and my daughter just simply said, well, obviously. And, and that's, that's the way it is out there. Um, if you were thinking about getting into cannabis, validate the why, ask the hard questions. Um, who else is impacted, right? So uh, getting into any small business is risky. Uh, it's creating your own entities, hanging out your own, it's risky. And we'll talk more about how, why that is, but in cannabis, it's it's uh, you're adding on a few more layers of insecurity that you need. You know, I, I've learned from that uh, are important. Um, who else is impacted if you're starting this business in cannabis? There's reputational risk from your reputation all the way through everybody, you know, your current network, your future network. Reputation is big in corporate America, as we all know. They all talk about reputational risk and the cost of that. So. Um, also, from a personal aspect, what's your what's your current life stage, right? How old are you? Because I'm old, and we need. I, I've learned that my perspective is that of mine. It is not that of everyone else. So I've really what what do others believe? What do the younger generations believe? Get that feedback. And what do you think you know? You need to validate that because I what I've learned over the last few years is that uh, very, I know very little, and I'm still really in the education stage uh, in cannabis. Um, you're going to get this a lot, cannabis really, 
Um, so it's, and I've heard this terminology used, it's a disease of perception or perspective. Again, being, being raised and born and raised in the Midwest, a very conservative culture um, with very conservative family uh, and friends, right? Um, very conservative schooling. Um, and so when that is my perspective and as I, as I grew and kind of moved out in my career and moved around the US and was able to travel, really kind of learned outside that perspective. But uh, a good example of this is, uh, I know I'm sure a lot of you've heard this, the uh, comment from um, Pete Ricketts, who's the governor of Nebraska, uh, flyover state at best, but um, the, this so, and I'll read it. Uh, so this is a dangerous drug that will impact our kids. The governor said, if you legalize marijuana, you're going to kill your kids. And I've highlighted the end of this quote, which is, that's what the data shows from around the country. So the first, you know, sentence of the, the first two sentences of the quote are obviously, you know, politically driven or whatever there is, but it's the last one that really got me off. You know, what, <laughs> what data, what data are you looking at? And so that's a, that is a perception and, a, and, and an issue in itself. There are the, the, these uh, 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 political figures, uh, which you have to keep in mind when you're going out, because cannabis is a hot button of, in, the, in the political realm. So uh, really need to be uh, aware of, the again, the reputation you're going to immediately put on once you are uh, established or, or start uh, doing business in cannabis, whether you're an ancillary partner or a touch, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's all the same. I've, I had, I've been turned down at a very large bank just to open my corporate account because me being a good corporate banker, corporate citizen, I told them everything. And they said, well, we, I said, but it's ancillary. I'm not, it's technology. They said, no. So uh, that, that is where it is in, in cannabis. It's just things you need to be aware of. Um, traditional partnerships, agreements, networks, uh, not, it's, it's, it is really a different world in cannabis uh, as you go out and start to develop these relationships, partnerships. Uh, cannabis is, uh, as an industry was, really rooted in, in uh, what others deem to be a criminal element uh, or a black market. And so there's that huge stigma and all the other things related to it that uh, our politicians obviously are continuing to push this uh, prohibition. Um, but it is something that is very real and it does have an impact on your ability to go out and do things like, you know, raise funds. Um, the other thing, hockey, the, so I like the, the hockey player uh, scenario is really just this idea of when you leave corporate America, you're the hockey player that's leaving the NHL, right? He's going on to do something else. He, he, he likes the Zamboni. He thinks he's got a better design, but he's leaving the NHL, even though he's still working in the NHL. He's not necessarily on the ice, right? Well, and, and what the NHL does, well, you're not going to need all of that equipment, Right. If you want to be a subcontractor, you want to go out and hang your, you're not going to need all that equipment you're wearing. So go ahead and give us that helmet or your health insurance, right? All of these things you, you no longer have. Now, if you're fortunate enough, I have a, a partner, wife, who has uh, been in corporate America for a very long time and has good benefits. So we we're fortunate in that aspect. However, she's getting ready to retire. goes back to the age thing. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration. But that hockey player and shredding the security, while it, for me, it was very uncomfortable. It took me a good year and a half to get through it, but the, it is better. I will tell you that once you kind of, it, it, it's all kind of an illusion anyway, the idea that you have that security and those health benefits and all that, that that's good. That's a security blanket, but how real it is and, and how, uh, how it benefits you in the long run, short, long run, long run is a different conversation. So you've decided you really want to do this. Uh, so next steps. Again, be honest with yourself, but be honest with everybody else. Be honest with your partners, be honest with your networks. Um, do the business case, do, put it down on paper, do the business case, and then ask others 
to scrutinize it. Same with the research, right? Do the research and then ask someone to discredit it, right? I, I spent a lot of time looking at research and, and numbers and, and then I've learned just the hard way, right? Is if, if you don't have others scrutinize your work, when you sit in front of an investor, you don't want them scrutinizing your work. So financing, have someone else manage the, if you can, have someone else find. I mean, that just, it, it is such a time management for me, at least personally, uh, having else someone take care of finances and managing all of that's great. Uh, industry networking and cannabis is very, uh, it's very um, complicated uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, I, I think a lot of the dispensaries have had uh, people coming in from outside, right? Like us, me coming in and talking to them about how they manage retail and what, where they need help and things. That, and so the, the great thing about them is they're very open. They're very honest. However, some of the players that came in before have, have caused them some distrust, right? They got burned by a previous vendor and they just kind of blanket the whole thing. It's not the first time it's happened. Working through those in it, working through that perception is important. Um, Non-traditional legal validity, yeah. So non-traditional funding when you're looking at financing investors, non-traditional equals legal validate source of all funds. If you are if you are looking for to you know uh, find some large uh, investors uh, where industrial level, right? And you really have to know exactly what the source of funds are. You want to start there because uh, any funds that aren't uh, if someone decides, and again, cannabis feed in the hot button it is, they can easily come in and uh, do an audit. Um, and the angels amongst us versus family and friends. Um, so family and friends uh, helped us quite a bit uh, on our first, on our early round, uh, and uh, a few angels amongst us. But when you are doing business, when you ask family to invest, uh, be aware that they consider themselves investors and have a voice uh, as they should. Uh, but set expectations with everyone early. Um, understand what those expectations mean when you set them because you want to be very, set all the ground rules very clearly, simple, and you will save yourself a lot of hard discussions in the future. Um, and if I can just uh, close this before we open for questions very quickly. Um, surround yourself with smart people. Find people who have the similar, uh, the, uh, similar drive and passion, but the, the different talents, right? You want somebody that has the same passion about cannabis or banking or whatever it is, but you don't want them to have the exact same talents you do. You want them to have talents uh, like accounting, for me, is finance. Um, so uh, look for those, again, same passion, same drive, different talents. Allow them to teach you. Uh, and learn to listen if you don't already know how, because I, um, your lingo, if you're coming from insurance or banking or wherever you might be coming from technology, your lingo is, is, a, is you know, it, it might, might as well be, you know, a, a complete foreign language, because it is. Um, layman's terms, learn the lingo of the, um, of the, industry you're going into and cannabis is a very there's a lot of lingo there that we've all learned very quickly so learn it and try to figure your own because you lose a lot of people in conversations if you're just talking about well if i can do this in the kpis and drop this and you know it, you'll lose them um set realistic goals and clear expectations with a full understanding that all of those are going to change all the expectations all the goals they change uh, especially in this environment. Um, and uh, just in closing, before I take questions, I will say that um, this has been, especially through, uh, as a lot of other people have shared through the pandemic and the uncertainty of what that's to bring us uh, here in the near future. You know, the fact that we are able to keep moving and, and keep going forward, that's that's key. Uh, but for me, I will tell you that even through all of this, uh, all of this the difficulties uh, up and down the supply chain, you know, I, I always say that I would I would uh, my worst day in cannabis is still better uh, than my best day in corporate America because I'm, I'm now doing what I want to do. And if you 
if you really are doing what you want to do, then even the really difficult stuff is better than the great stuff that you didn't really prioritize or hold any value to. So, all right, well, that's my time. Thank you all for coming.